How we doing out there, everybody? Anonymous Disco here. Welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. There we go, right there. It's all on the ticket, baby. Um, but let's get back. Let's dig back into this thing. Um, yeah, so there we are. Elkhorn Valley. Continue. So I think our next objective was to go back to the bait shop. We do, so we still have to fix that TV again. Shannon, hey stranger. Conway, I didn't think you were coming back. Okay. Uh, did you find what you were looking for? I think we've already seen this scene, but whatever. Yeah, maybe, look. We're not going to talk about that anymore, okay? You're always walking on eggshells with this Shannon girl. Fair enough. How's the leg? I can walk on it, but it's slow. Well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. You don't mind me hitching a ride, do you? I kind of like a lift out here, and I wasn't sure uh, when I'd be heading back. I can drive. No, I'll, I'll be doing the driving. Thank you very much. Okay, your decision. I still need to find the zero. Well, it's like you to like I told you, Weaver doesn't lie. If she sent you here to find your your on ramp, on ramp, this is where you should be looking. Or maybe you were just you just weren't listening closely enough, and that's not exactly what she said. I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's north by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and Peonia, uh, in the back of the bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Well, we have been to... Uh, there's Homer, the dog. Oh, I thought I interacted with him, but I guess not. This guy's just limping around. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Conway has places to go. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, we were, we were once at the bait shop. We have seen it, but let's go there. Let's check it out. Take a little guitar player. A young man in gray stained clothes sits by the side of the road. He is playing a worn guitar. To his left is a blue mug and to his right, a weathered dog. Let's listen. The young man strums absently on the guitar hums tuneless and occasionally mumbles a word put a dollar in the cup the young man stops playing pulls the wet dollar bill out of his whiskey and hands it back to conway <laughs> sorry dude i was just trying to all right i don't remember exactly it was over here somewhere though Nolan Dam Road. We'll hit it eventually. And that, uh... Airplane. Oh, cool. Two shirtless, shoeless men push a light aircraft along the highway. Occasionally one or the other slips a bit on the sweating asphalt or stops to pull back his hair. The men are nearly broken. The rubber is almost worn away. Soon these men will be dragging this airplane. Conway is ready to leave. I don't think that baby's gonna take off, take wing. Okay, there's... Here's Peonia. I think the bait shop's right up here. Yeah, bait shop. Conway and Shannon pull into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road on a thin steel bar, hammered inside and reads live bait. Yeah, okay, so we've seen all this. 
I've seen all this. The walls are lined with cheap metal shelves loaded precariously with vacuum tubes, awkwardly shaped metal castings, and coffee cans full of electronic components. Shannon leaves Conway to the back of the room where a few TV sets in various states of disassembly are set up on a rough wooden table. She flips the switch on the power strip they're all plugged into, and the TV sets tremble with life. Watch TV sets. A ghostly white wobble flickers along one screen in a rhythmic pattern. Another is just snow. A third, a small security monitor in the middle of the table, is oscillating between different shades of black. Ask Shannon about Weaver. Shannon points to a small security monitor on the table. The image on the screen is just black, but it seems to be fading slowly, almost imperceptibly between different shades of black. Shannon tweaks a few knobs on the side of the monitor, but the picture doesn't change. Stare at the security monitor. The screen is a cavernous black. It hums and swells at the pace of the tide. Conway loses track of the workshop walls. They could, have, they could be inches away or miles. He is adrift on black water, traveling swiftly towards a rocky shore. There should be a lighthouse or a, a buoy by the rocks. It's too dangerous. Shannon switches off the power strips. Weaver is not here. Weaver's not here, man. Alright. We'll keep on trucking, if you will. There's the fake limb factory or whatever. Burning tree. Still burning? Tall black oak burns on the hill above the road. Marquez Farmhouse. Is the band here anymore? Doesn't look like they are. Man, our Conway guy is getting around pretty slow. Why do you stop? Oh, she's gonna carry him. Wonder if he's gonna make it. There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Oh. Or it's art or something. I don't know. What are the names on the headstones? Nowaski, Padilla. I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before. I know when they bought this property, it already had a house and everything. Or maybe they have uh, some other symbolic meaning. Oh, and look at the headstone, Marquis. I used to think that was for my parents. Now I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Conway's going to make it, man. Uh 
She ain't here either. So, this is where she was, yeah? Makes sense. This was where Weaver and her parents live. They took out a bunch of loans, you know, and had this place built. Do you have any debts? Uh... I never really had any collateral. Something to be said for that, I guess. My parents were like that until the company store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air pur purifiers. For my mom, it was canneries. Two solutions to the same problem, but they sure sounded different. Weaver had debt too. A lot of it. All tuition. How'd she pay it off? She didn't. She had no income. None of them did. I think eventually Weaver put those math skills to work on all the red numbers and they finally in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless their situation was. So she left. I guess she was just drove away into the middle of the night. They woke up in the morning and the car was gone. Never came back. Till tonight. Someone else told me to come here and talk to her. Huh? Okay. I guess we t I guess we too aren't the only ones she's been talking to. Oh, that's not something you see every day. That old TV right there. Well, that's that is a damned antique for you. That's a damn. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it it off to make rent. Most painful decision I ever made. Say, do you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded and the screen is leaking. Come on, I bet uh, Lysette would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into disrepair. Oh yeah, these tubes are all messed up. Look like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing out of this one. That's okay. I have a few spares in my bag here. Here, I pulled this one out of an old computer monitor. Just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that oughta... Should be seeing something now. Are you seeing anything? A little bit to the left. Damn, okay. Here, I think this... The contacts are dirty. Now, don't go telling my customers I clean old vacuum tubes with spit. Ew. There, just gotta turn it north, south, and... We're in. Whoa, what the hell? Is that the route to the zero? Kentucky Route Zero. We seeing a premonition of the future. End of Act One. Hmm. 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 Play. Launch. Launch. Limits and, demonst and demonstrations. Wall text. Limits and demonstrations. Alula Chamberlain Retrospective. 
marking the first major public showcase of her work in over 20 years. This retrospective exhibit, ex, exhibition of work by pioneering installation artist Lula Chamberlain comprises a diagonal slice through time, place, and form. The pieces on display here were individually debuted over a period of 35 years, designed in Chamberlain's various homes and studios between her beloved Mexico City and her na native Elizabethtown. They represented a range of, of scale and impact from the intimate warmth of ver uh, vertex t texture fetch to the infamous visage, the latter of which requires a vertical clearance over 30 feet. Yet these works share a confounding legacy in each of their debut ex exhibitions they were nearly impossible to install. Galleries and museums balked at the scale, power requirements, and highly skilled labor involved in maintaining these works for display. Some of their debuts collapsed under the weight of logistics, only to be successfully exe executed much later. And so, just as they described the outer limits of Chamberlain's range as an installation artist, the geographical edges and vertical uh, of, uh, of, in, of her inherent home life at the beginning and end of her distinguished career. The works on display here also trace, trace the extreme of our capabilities in the frontiers of our patients as both viewers and exhibitors. Are we capable of viewing these works as they were meant to be viewed? Do we even want to be? Whoa. What's going on, man? So I'm somebody else now. I take over maybe this artist chick. She's got some pretty crazy art that uh, can be like looked at in di from different angles. Title card, Basement Puzzle Number 2, Artist, Sunset, and Horse, 1976, Plaster and Wire. Oh, so we're not at the artist trick, we're just here viewing it. Where's Emily? But isn't that... Alright, okay, okay. No, it was like Lula fucking something, okay. Emily, what do you think she means by puzzle? Bob, yeah, weird. I guess it's something you can solve. Wait a second. Are these the three people that were playing that game in the basement? Remember those people playing the game in the basement and they disappeared? Was it, is this them? Maybe? They must be symbols. Artists. Sunset. Horse. Or maybe it's an anagram. Or like a code. Maybe it's not a puzzle, it's just about a puzzle. Maybe it's a puzzle, but there's no right answer. That is kind of sad. Title card, Overdub, Nam, June... Pock installation. In the style of Edward Packer, 1965-73-80 magnetic tape handheld playback head speaker system, voice of the artist, computer synthesized speech. Oh, I read about this one. It's interactive. How does it work? It's a bunch of old tape and you rub this tape playback head along it and just listen to the recordings, I guess. Let's try it out. I think you can start in the middle. As Bob drags the playback head along the tape, a woman's voice issues unsteadily from the speakers. We start in the middle. Donald and Joseph are in the hallway. I am in the office. The walls are lined with filling, filing cabinets. A few drawers hang open. The door is ajar. A massive computer looms in the corner. There are some punched cards on the floor. A synthetic voice recording spliced awkwardly into the tape lists out options in monotone. To examine cards, rotate 30 degrees and advance 7 inches to leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. 
Examine cards. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Encoded in the holes punched through these cards is a first draft of the poetic subs subsystem. I can read punch cards by sight. Donald can, I think. Anyway, this version was pretty underwhelming. To leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. Activate computer. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Lula. So loud, I love it. I am now holding two punched cards. One in... On one of them, Joseph has scribbled a note. Caves. The other is blank. To insert caves card, rotate 11 degrees and advance 2 inches. To insert blank card, rotate 95 degrees and advance 14 inches. Caves card. We're on a dirt trail in the park. Or, well, it's not really a trail. It's a trail. It's more like a tendency. They tend to be fewer plants here on the path we've been walking. Walking sounds. Now, we're walking at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to mossy rock as the ground sinks into darkness. Joseph and Donald are following a rope into the cave. They have a computer equipment tied to their backs. So do I. So enter the cave, rotate 60 degrees left, and advance 4 inches. Enter the cave. That's the last trip, so everything's down here now. Distant. The final resting place. Distant. Don't be so morbid. Computer, to remember a fond gesture, rotate 180 degrees and advance 23 inches. To regret a harsh word, rotate 12 degrees. Remember? It's morning now. I'm in the car. I'm driving to work. This is the last recording I'll make on this tape, and then I'll drop it in the mall in the mail tomorrow, and then who knows. I've been recording on this tape for 15 years, I think. A lot of other things happened, so here is the story. When I met Donald and Joseph, they were both students, and I was in a band performing on campus. They came to my show, and then we met at some bar and had a few drinks. Together, Joseph wanted to impress me, so he stole a metal cocktail tumbler and gave it to me. We got kicked out, wandered drunkly until morning, and finally ended up at a diner. And now I use the tumbler to store extra pens on my desk. So I'm almost out of tape. I guess I'll I'll just let it run out in a while. I let it I'll let it run out while I drive. No instructions. No, that's the end of this tape strip. I don't think we ever reached this long. I don't think we ever reached this long at the top here. It ugh. At the top here. Is it cheating to skip over there? I won't tell a soul. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Donald, distant. Think of our work, our research. Joseph, you'll die in these damn cold caves. And what about those men? You know they'll come back. Donald, we'll go deeper, that's all. They'll never find us. Joseph, do you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you, but not me. I'm going back to the surface. Lula, stop. Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damned cave. Joseph is right. We can't stay here. I'm leaving too, but I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagon, and I'm heading down the zero. Joseph, distant. You'll be lost forever. Donald, distant. But we need your voice for the machine, Lula. It only recognizes your voice. Lula. I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording. I'll put it in the my on the mail and then you can see your damned machine. And then you can see what your damned machine does with it. Oh. Hmm. What the hell? Title card, Visage, 1984, Unknown Media. What is that made of? 
It's a mystery. Looks like ribbon, bandages. Oh, have you seen the invisible man? It's slice of visage to build a visage. A puzzle to its owner. What? It's a poem I read. It's a poem I read, sorry. I think it's it was written by a computer. Sounds like it. Title card, Vertex Texture Fetch, uh, Tree Television and Suspended Cathode, Ray 2, 1968, Found Materials. The picture on the TV. What is that? Is it a lighthouse? No, it's a weather vane or a windmill or something. Is it a lighthouse? It's weird, this room keeps switching around while we move it. Spinning coin, suspended, correct, uh, correcting for anal angular motion, 1976, found materials. Didn't you have one of these? Oh yeah, I did have an old microphone re reader like this. I got it at a garage sale. Couldn't figure out what to do with it. That's my whole shed. It's a bunch of weird obsolete electronics I thought I might use. Someday. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I'll just sell them for scrap when the, when the price of lead and plastic goes up. I guess everything gets broken down eventually. Okay, so that is the entire exhibit. So I wonder if we kind of like look back at this way. Because there was the exit over there. Oh, there it is. So the exit. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm ready to go. I need to get to work anyway. Some cool uh, pieces of art there. Very, uh... Very out there. Oh, weird. Interesting, interesting. So that was just like a little... Uh... So I wonder if Act 2 is going to come back with Conway and Shannon. I thought maybe... Oh, maybe not. I don't know. This is the first caller we've seen, too. Letter. Lula Chamberlain. Reply. Your application. Thank you for your application to the Gaston Trust for... Um, uh, Imagined Architecture Annual Fellowship. We received a record number of applications this year, over a hundred in total, and regrettably, regrettably, we can award only a fellowship position per year. As you know, our review process includes a multi-phase blind committee and analysis of portfolio submissions, as well as a careful review by a panel of subject matter experts on each applicant's notable and relevance in the field. We must be extremely selective in our process so as to maintain the standards we have established over 35 years in operation. Our panel did not select your application. We encourage you to consider reapplying next year. Many young artists and architects, architects reapply for successive years before being accepted. Sincerely, Dr. Carl Stone Norden, Architect, Gaston Trust for Imagine Architecture. Below the printed text is a hastily handwritten note. Sorry for the condescending form letter. Love your work. Unfortunately, I just do the mail here. Your opt SVT Robert. Hmm. Put it in the handbag. Uh, 
Uh, proposal opens a folder of writing paper on our desk. Let's see what's in this proposal folder. Sorts your documents all printed on a fading letterhead reading Bureau, Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Proposal number one, site, hospital, proposed use, auto dealership. Proposal two, distillery, proposed use, graveyard. Site number three, basketball court, proposed use, kennel. Proposal number one, hospital closed due to repeated sanitation violations. Auto dealership sanitation requirements comparatively lax. Small operating rooms could be repurposed into offices. Large cubicle style administrative offices could be repurposed into showrooms. Endorsed. Proposal 2, Stite Distillery, Purpose Use Graveyard. We always need a new graveyard. Run out of place to put those dead bodies. Distillery, still active, but scaling down operations to less than half of a site. Distillery built on top of gra graveyard originally. Hybrid distillery slash graveyard could share resources. Chapel once repurposed into bottling facility could be repurposed into chapel. I'm against that. That sounds kind of weird and gross. Rick clears his throat. Busy? How are you, Rick? I shouldn't complain, so... Um, did you get my note? About the proposal, I just finished them. Oh, great, okay. I'll tell Diane. I think she was waiting on... I don't know. So, how did your application go? I was in the mailroom, and I saw you got a letter back. Sorry, I don't mean to pry. I, I just saw. It's fine, Rick. I'm not going anywhere. How's your goldfish? Act 2, Scene 1. Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Huh, where are we now? Barrier. End of the line. Maybe it's still under construction. Hmm, well... Work seems to have stopped for the moment. See how Holmes doing. Hey, Homer. Get a good rest in the truck. Yeah, I know you love a drive. Sorry about all the walking. Maybe we could both use the exercise. Sure, it's hard on your creaky paws, too. Conway. Um, what should we say? Didn't we just pass this place? I don't think the Zero operates like the roads we were used to. I don't understand it either. So what is this place? Conway. Looks like an old office building. Looks like a cathedral. What do you think? Looks like an old office building. Yeah, an office building in a cathedral. This is weird, but... Do you think we're inside or outside right now? Outside. Yeah, outside. Any man-made structure, I guess, just feels like it's still inside since we can't see the sky. Well, maybe someone around here has a better sense of direction. Go down the stairs? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. 
Nobody. <gasps> Marianne. Well, here you are. Better late than never, I guess. Just unload the whiskey over there by the elevator. I'll figure something out. We're actually a bit lost, ma'am. You're lost? So you're not the... Sorry, honest mistake. We're supposed to have a little celebration here at the office, but the whiskey never showed up. I saw your truck and thought, but you don't really look like one of the boys from the distillery anyway. What is this place? Well, it's clear you're new to this territory. I expect you just being to be passing through. We're looking for Dogwood Drive. Do you know where that is? Dogwood. Nope. You're going to need to talk to someone upstairs about that. One of the map clerks. But first, we've got to get to you in the system. So you'll need an appointment uh, with one of the ingestion clerks. Now, let's see. Rick has booked proofreading drafts all afternoon. And Wanda's out uh, on a site. Hmm. Let me go make some calls and see if we have anyone free. There are some books over there in the waiting area. Or just take a look around. Have you seen our uh, grotesque? Is that what that was? Grot grot no. There's like TVs in the holes in the wall. The television is playing what looks like a nature documentary. A hermit crab scuttles across a beach. Its shell is in awkward shape. It must have once belonged to a different crab. The television is playing an instructional video on elevator design. It is crucial to maintain proper lighting in an elevator. In the absence of sight, passenger's sense of motion is greatly enhanced. The passenger should never feel as though they are physically ascending or descending the elevator. Should create the illusion that the building is flat. This is the mark of a successful elevator design. Huh. The, uh, the television is playing a cartoon about a bird. The bird collects pieces for its nest, a scarf, a plastic shopping bag, uh, a bit of a young girl's hair. The nest is warm, but precariously fragile. Television is playing a closed circuit security feed of a housing project. The feed switches mechanically between locations a hallway, a, dis a disused plot of grass, a stairwell, a mailbox. The television is playing a silent video of an empty theater. A microphone sits in the middle of the stage. The lights are slightly dim. The speakers hum impatiently. Oh good, I thought you'd left. People can be so impatient, you never know. Well, I have you a meeting with Lula Chamberlain, a senior clerk, and she, and doesn't usually handle the ingestion process, but she's the only one with room on her plate this evening. My schedule says she's on the fifth floor, reviewing some diagrams. The elevator is just back to the left there, fifth floor.
Three books are piled on the table. A service manual for sewage pump, some architectural plans for a bungalow, and a slim collection of Japanese death haiku. An envelope is protruding from the bottom of the stack. Picks up the envelope. The envelope reads, Bureau of, Secure, of Secret Tourism. It contains several small handwritten brochures with ritualistic directions to bizarre locations. Seems like this elevator has proper lighting. She's on the fifth floor, right? Conway scans a column of elevator buttons. Fifth floor, diagrams and drafts. Bears, third floor bears. Okay, let's go see what bears is all about. Now I'm just curious. It's weird because it said she's on the flip. Oh, it is literally just a room full of bears. Huh. Hey, guys. It's weird because it said she was on the fifth floor, but I saw her on the first floor there. Let's go to the flip floor where shits and giggles anyway, see what's going on up there. But I think we'll have to go back to the first floor to... Or maybe we'll just talk to this guy. That is in Lula Chamberlain, though. I'm looking for THE Lula Chamberlain, please. Greg is hard at work examining some diagrams, measuring angles with a plastic protractor, and occasionally scribbling numbers on a small leather notebook. Can I help you? Don't answer that. Are you Lula Chamberlain? Um, no. You just missed her, actually. She was up here about an hour ago. She's probably back at a real desk now on the first floor. She's barely made a dent in these diagrams. Must have been distracted. Speaking of which... Uh, no thank you for fucking fixing your record player, I guess, there, eh, buddy? Are they all just underground, too? Like, does this whole thing take place underground? This whole game? going down bears <laughs> Rick hello are you lost we're looking for Lula Chamberlain oh no she's much too busy Let's get some of our junior clerks to sort their paperwork first so we don't have to waste any of Miss Chamberlain's time. It's a pretty straightforward process. First, you'll need to get a case number assigned. Talk to the clerk, uh, Metstein, about that. Just She's just over there at the end of the room. Happy to help. Clerk Metstein. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. I just need your ingestion card and a list of your last five permanent addresses. Ingestion card? Oh, no, ingestion card. Okay, that's okay. Just go talk to Clerk Boehm first, and he'll get you set up with one. Clerk Boehm is just over in the corner. Happy to help.
Howdy. Here for the ingestion card? No problem. He rummages through some papers on his desk. Clerk Boehm. Happy to help. He opens up a few folders and quickly closes them. Um, looks like I'm out, but I know we're, uh, I know there are some in the back of the archive. You'll have to put in a special request with Clerk Macmillan. She's the document czar. Straight back at the end of the office there by the file cabinets, okay? This is just a runaround. Where's Lula Chamberlain? Oh, no, it's, I mean, that's her right there in the cardigan. Lula, having fun in the paperclip labyrinth? Well, you made it eventually. You look exhausted. I'll offer you my seat, but my ankles are turning on me. Arthritis? Dr. Truman says my joints are eroding one another. They've been uh, collaborating. Am I, is it collaborating? No, it's not collaborating. It's collaborating. Col col yeah. Anyways, who fucking cares? It's natural they want to kill each other now. Well, enough of my hateful. Enough of about. Uh, well, enough about my hateful wrists and ankles. This concrete bunker of an office is just a waypoint for you. I'm sure. Uh, where is it you're trying to go? It's just a concrete waypoint for you. I'm sure. Where is it that you're trying to go? We're looking for five Dogwood Drive. Hmm. Dogwood Drive. That's funny. Do you know I used to live on a Dogwood Drive? This was years ago. A grimy old house. Basement full of insects. Attic full of birds. I had a few roommates. We all worked at the university. I had a dog. I drank whiskey and beer. And made sculptures. But that Dogwood was a surface road. With a name like that, it would have... It would have to be. What are you doing on the zero it was a surface road so that means that we're all living underground like does something happen to the planet now everyone moved underground perhaps is that what's going on i don't know um my cousin weaver sent us this way your cousin weaver weaver marquis I hadn't expected to hear from her again. Do you know her? She came through here as an intern. One of my old colleagues must have referred her. Do you know? Uh, I never asked. Anyway, there's not much challenging work here, much less for a gifted mathematician. She helped translate some notes on architectural plans, and I'm picked up in Mexico. That I picked up in Mexico, or plans I picked up in Mexico. She was very bored. We used to sit on the steps by the river on our lunch break and talk about geometry. I hope she wasn't in trouble. I lost touch with her so suddenly. I had recommended she go see some old friends of mine at the university about some new acoustic surveying venture. I often worry she became wrapped up in some ten, uh, tenor professor quixotic research project. You know, the type. Gray-haired, intellectual, narcissistic. Well, that is... I guess she sent you here because she respected me. I thought I could help. Weaver's a dear girl, but I'm afraid you've been misled. Excuse me. But where's the dogwood drive you lived on? Maybe it's the same one. No, it's not possible. The dogwood drive I lived on is now called Pale Dogwood Drive. They've renamed all the streets, you see. Too many streets with the same names. It was never a problem before, but now we have these databases. And it's all too confusing for the computer. The computer has no sense of ambiguity, so it proclaims an error named collision, they call them. So my dog would drive is pale dog would drive, and another might be large-leafed dogwood drive or himalayan flowering dogwood drive and so on but one of them is still just dogwood drive or so we might hope it's really a matter of consulting records of which we have an abundance here do you have a record of those streets 
I expect we must. They'll be in the archives and records, fourth floor. It'll be filed under zero for autonyms. Probably, or G for generic, or maybe S for specific. Depending on which part of the street name was changed. Fourth floor. I love the bears floor. Document. Gotta look at the document. Damn, this place is a mess. Okay. Hmm. Take a look through that logbook, I guess. Maybe there's some kind of system to all these boxes. I'll just start digging. The small logbook has a smart, small, uh, smart leather cover. A few notes are scribbled on the inside covers. Most pages are just a list of titles, names, and dates. Inside the front cover, page 1, page 14. Inside the back cover, put the logbook away. Inside the front cover. Note, in logbook document staff, please do not transfer any more records from the storage unit until we get a new file cabinet in. We are up to F, and that will have to do for now. Instruct clerks to focus on activities beginning with the letters A, B, C, D, E, or F, or activities most likely to involve research on subjects becoming with those letters. For example, cars is okay because it involves automotive driving brakes, etc., but air quality is not okay because it relates to health, safety, pollution, etc. Calmly, inside front cover... This is a very confusing place. Several documents relating to sporting competition uh, venues were quickly checked out and back in over a period of a few days. Basketball courts, baseball fields, alleys, and parking lots. A single set of documents relating to coal mining operations was checked out and back in by several different people within an hour. Failing antique shops, folder missing, listed checked in checked in on page 63, but is not pre present. Doesn't, uh, doesn't Conway deliver antiques? Put a long work away. Nothing me either. Half of these boxes aren't labeled, and the rest are all from the first few letters of the alphabet. I couldn't find anything with a zero or a G or an S. Maybe that clerk knows somewhere else we can look. Okay, your office is down on the first floor. Lula. Lula. Nothing that's unfortunate. Well, they must still be in transit. You see, we've only moved into this new venue somewhat recently, and it's all a bit in progress. Uh, that was the... that This was a cathedral not so long ago. Can you believe it? And then the burial reclaimed it. The old congregation has been directed to one of our storage facilities for their activity. Now that's where you'll find the street name records I expect at the church. Marianne, reception can give you directions. Just come back here when you have the files and we'll begin the necessary paperwork to have the information analyzed. Oh, and while you're out on the road, you might want to stop and see Dr. Truman about your leg. He's a specialist regarding an ailments of, of joints and limbs and you know 
and I know he works at night. His home his home office is in a small neighborhood at the east edge of Bowling Green. Here's his card. Do stop and see him. That leg is a miserable sight. Take care of each other. You see Dr. Truman in that blank. Alright, let's get out of here. Get what you need. Be straight with me. What is this place? Just another office, lady. Just another job. But you kicked out a congregation just to set up your office? I wasn't here for yet, for that. But yeah, I get where you're coming from. Still, I wouldn't judge until I'd seen everything. They got a new church now. The Bureau set it up for them out in some of their old storage space. I'm sure it's very nice. Go see it for yourself. Just get back on the zero and drive until you hit the crystal. Then turn around. The crystal? It'll make sense once you get on the road. You can handle it. Time to go. Oh, weird. So we're like... There's the crystal. The pipe organ. Staircase. Find the crystal, then turn around. What is the deal? Jaws. Hey, you're looking kind of tired there, old man. Want me to take the wheel for a bit? Sure. Wonder if that changes anything. Self storage. Self storage. St. Thomas Church. Alright. Well, I'm going to leave it there for the time being. Um, I don't know. It's still a mystery, this game. Um, the only thing that's maybe becoming a little more clear is that, like, I think they, they're underground. Like, this whole world is is underground or something like that for whatever reason. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. Still looking for the Zero. Still looking for Dogwood Drive. And uh, it's still a fucking really bizarre, weird game. I really like it. It's really well written. Um... It's just, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, still just a mystery what's going on, but that's kind of what keep, keeps me hooked, is that, like, it's such a bizarre, weird, weird world 
that I want to I want to see some more of it. And I want to figure out what what the hell's going on. What the what the fuck's going on? Anyways, I'll leave it there for the time being. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, talk to you guys soon. Peace the fuck out. See you later.